marketing and all of that kind of stuff. Um, HR, you know, those kinds of apps, you know, we, we use our SaaS as well. I tried to keep that out of there because it, it's really, that has nothing to do with the marketing and or sales uh, for BashFu. Uh, but these are all the tools that we use uh, specific to those efforts. So, you know, we do have a couple of CRMs. We're a SharpSpring uh, partner. Uh, and so we're, uh, we use that internally for ourselves as, uh, to get our uh, marketing automation campaigns out. Uh, mostly uh, to, you know, to larger lists uh, using SharpSpring. Uh, and then I, I'm also running, me, since I'm sales executive for the company, um, I'm running AMO CRM uh, personally to do kind of more of the one-to-one -one type of relationships. So not newsletters, uh, not, uh, not sequences, not like planned sequences, like welcome sequences or uh, things like that. Uh, it's mainly uh, for uh, kind of one to one, like, hey, you know, did you, you know, uh, did you want to meet next week? Those kinds of things. So that's how I keep track of uh, most of my uh, sales funnel is is in AMO CRM. Uh, they're, they're a fairly new company. I think they started in 2017, 2018, maybe, uh, they're out of Russia. Uh, occasionally their, their, uh, uh, their app will bug, bug out and then like show like Rus Russian text and stuff. So it's, it's not, it's not exactly the, uh, uh, most, uh, developed, uh, mature piece of software. Uh, but it, uh, it does really hit, hit a lot of the marks when it comes to messaging. Um, Stripo, uh, is, uh, a tool that we use to go and format emails. Uh, Sharp Springs has a really terrible, uh, email, uh, formatter. Uh, it's, it's just terrible. It just does a horrible job of formatting emails for specifically for Outlook users. Uh, and a lot of our clients are manufacturing, and so they're all running Outlook, you know, 2013 or something like that. And so, uh, you know, we we understand that, and so we have to properly format the emails, and Stripo does a great job of that. Uh, no cold outreach to talk about. Um, Calendly, everybody uses that. Uh, I use that personally for, you know, scheduling meetings and stuff. And then Calendly meetings also dump into my, uh, opportunity stack in, in uh, AMO CRM. So if I have a meeting with you, you're automatically a sales lead and until I say differently. Um, uh, then Creative, uh, Adobe Creative Suite, and then Vizmay. Um, I got on with them early on and they're, they're really good for when I, we have, usually have a set of interns that come in uh, to to work over the summer and uh, they don't know how to use Adobe Creative Suite yet, but they can go and create banner ads and such uh, using that Visme tool. Uh, Trello, uh, everyone's familiar with that, I guess. Uh, we've got uh, most of my ops team on Trello and then we guest out uh, to our customers so that they can kind of view where their projects are at uh, in Trello. So that allows them to uh, kind of, you know, Know, see where we're at uh, in the entire process. Um, data, we've got a lot of data tools. Um, lead feeder uh, to go recognize uh, visits to the website. Uh, SharpSpring also has something like that. Uh, who is visiting? That's a new one. I'm, I'm uh, beta testing right now. Uh, and Zero Bounce, we use that tool to scrub e email lists uh, and to go clean up our own lists. Uh, X verify same thing uh, email scrubbing uh, that one also does append uh, data append function so I can go and add phone numbers on uh, onto uh, lists that we've created uh, and then Lidero is uh, is kind of a list builder <coughs> excuse me a list builder and uh, just one seat uh, for that so that's those are tools usually I use or one of my uh, uh, Ops guys logs in as me uh, into those tools. Rad, Mike, you've been awesome, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any questions. I I have a pretty cool Trello add-on that I've been experimenting with. It's it's Crumble. It allows you to create a CRM out of any Crumble or a, a Trello dashboard. Yeah. 
crmble.com. So you can run it for free. And I like to use it for like HR tasks mm. or like, um, you know, non say like if you don't have a deep <clears> funnel <throat> for the sales, you don't have a deep pipeline. It's really good if you like Trello and you like that UI with the Kanban boards, it mm -hmm. sets up automatically. And um, it's got our already has some automations and some task stuff that happens automatically. But um, that was awesome. Thank you so yeah, much. I want to move. On to, uh, I believe Marquis has a question about LinkedIn automation for Alex uh, Dennery. And for those of you, Marquis, ditto, Alex Dennery, introduce yourself if you can. And then Marquis, Alex yeah, take it away. Go ahead. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Hopefully you can uh, hear me. I'm actually at a hostel right now, so I know there's a little bit of music. Um, but uh, but yeah, basically I have uh, two businesses. So I help uh, B2B uh, professionals with uh, basically saving time and also getting more appointments. Um, so right now we're just working with a lot of, uh, I would say, agencies, consultants, coaches. Um, right now we're also getting a little bit more into recruiting. Um, and then on the other side, I also do uh, cleaning. I work in the cleaning industry, uh, helping them create their own systems, kind of a done with you type of model. And uh, yeah, if anyone has any advice on that, I'm all ears because that's a new thing for me is coaching and, and doing all that. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and Mark, you had a specific question about LinkedIn automation? Yeah, I do. Actually, oh, was yeah. it you too? I also had one. I want to yeah, make sure. Yeah, sure, for sure. Okay, go ahead, Mar Marcel. Are you wearing the shirt that's in your LinkedIn profile? I was gonna go try and look. Yeah, I'm trying. I try to create familiar. a consistent experience across Branding. all platforms. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <It's> okay, uh, <laughs> Alex. Awesome that you're uh, you're at a hostel right now. I wish. I wish not here in the snow. Yeah. Um, in the past, like on my my tab here for Ditto, I put that I used to use um, Meet Alfred for doing outreach and similar to, to Glenn, like I went the route where I was just sending out like canned messages, like every like few days or every seven days. And I think Cloda may have gotten, you know, one of those, you know, at, at the time that I was doing it, that's how we actually got connected. Um, and then I refined that where it was just like a page view connection request with that initial message. And then I would jump in, but I've always found it to be pretty clunky. It's never like worked really well. It's not really personal. So I'm just curious how that works in your world and you know, what's different about your offering. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of tools out there. <laughs> I'm sure you guys all know because you guys are all uh, in the agency space. So um, two, two of the main, I would say most important parts is the messaging. So in the very beginning, what I would re always recommend is testing different campaigns. So if you're an agency owner and you have uh, different kind of prospects, um, I would test different types of searches as well as different uh, industries or different kinds of types of individuals. Alex, you're familiar with this. We were testing different things in the first week. Um, but yeah, that first week or two, I mean, that's really kind of just like marketing in general. That's really just a testing period. So you're just trying different messages, trying different targeting, seeing what's going to get the responses. And once you get that consistent, you know, you can add in different things like, you know, emails or, you know, different response campaigns, uh, text messages, if you have like a CRM or something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would just say like, you know, really just try to keep your messaging just as simple and to the point as possible. Um, Cause what, what I'm seeing a lot on LinkedIn is, you know, a lot of people like to send out these whole paragraphs and all this crazy stuff. Uh, for something like agencies where there's like so many of us and it's like so um, it can be saturated in a lot of ways. So I would try to do more of like a soft pitch uh, approach, um, whether that's giving like some type of free value. If you have like a master class or Alex, in your case, you have this whole community, which makes it very simple uh, for people to get involved. It's no cost. So it's like, why would I just kind of put yourself in their shoes? Like, hey, you know, is this person trying to pitch me or are they trying to help me kind of thing and try to kind of try to set that tone as early as possible. Um, but yeah, usually just simply like, hey, this is this is what I do. This is why I'm reaching out. Um, this is uh, who I help, how I can help, you know, we'd be interested in talking, just have like a clear call to action. Um, and then usually one or two messages does the trick. And if you have a Calendly, uh, that's probably what I'd recommend. Just make it simple so that they can book a call with you. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd love to take that like offline, like chat some more about that. Um, 
because uh, I'm in that space again where I kind of need some of that like LinkedIn activity. I'm doing paid ads on LinkedIn right now, but for anyone who's doing paid ads, they can be pretty expensive on LinkedIn specifically. And so I'd love to know like what your process looks like and what that testing phase looks like as well. So yeah, okay. let's definitely connect and set something up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll definitely talk after. Yeah, I heard about Link. I've actually never personally tried LinkedIn ads. Um, but yeah, if you have any tips on that, I would, I'm all yours as well. Because I mean, I, that's kind of what I heard as well, is that it was a little bit expensive. Um, so even even for ourselves, like we, we do what we, what we help others with, like we do our own LinkedIn campaigns. But yeah. I was even looking at that route of, you know, whether trying to consider, you know, for like a kind of like a SaaS type of service or whatever. I was trying to see if LinkedIn was a good uh, way to go or maybe Facebook ads. That's something we're actually trying to figure out right now. Yeah. Well, just like, like an additional kind of an additional way. So I'm just going to chime in really quick on this marquee and say that um, LinkedIn ads are typically more expensive. That's because the targeting on LinkedIn is unlike any other platform. So one way to think about this is, can you arbitrage the targeting on LinkedIn and then pay less on another platform? So think about what is the uh, call to action or the objective for a campaign on LinkedIn that allows you to target exactly the right people, get them on your website, pixel them there, and then actually remarket to them on Facebook and Instagram where it's way, way cheaper. Um, so that might be just a way to think about decreasing the costs um, through that full funnel because remarketing somebody all the way through the funnel on LinkedIn will probably get pretty pricey right. just by nature of what the costs are on that platform. But you might be able to still get some value out of the targeting ability at the top of the funnel. Um, and then with that, Alex, this question might be way too much in the weeds for you, but this is something I've been trying to figure out how to do for a very long time. And sure, maybe sure. You, you know of a way to do it, but... I am not super interested in using LinkedIn outreach at like the top of the funnel. What I'm more interested in is having people that visit my website. Like I could pixel them and send them an in message in LinkedIn, but I'd rather do it for free. So I'm like, how can I take like lead feeder or Albacross take their, um, you know, cause we can identify who they are and potentially what their email address is and then look up their LinkedIn profile add them to an outreach campaign and then send them a message, which is like, Hey, I noticed you were checking out our website. Just want to reach out and connect. So it's like, it's a lot more topical, but I haven't found a fully automated way of taking a website visitor and then laddering that into a, a LinkedIn profile that I can actually add to a campaign. I've tried a bunch of different stuff, uh, Phantom Busters and a whole bunch of different platforms. I've never really been able to put all the pieces together. Gotcha. That's a, that's a great question, man. So, um, yeah, because I, I could tell you for LinkedIn to some type of campaign. Um, usually right. webhooks is probably the best way if you have like Zapier. Um, yeah. But then for the website, I guess it might depend also like on your website. Like, I don't know if you're on WordPress because I know there's all those different. Okay. You, am, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm wondering maybe there's like an add-on or what do they call them again? The uh, like a uh, plugin add, or a plugin. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe there's some type of plugin that... Um, yeah, because the thing about LinkedIn, it's it's a little bit touchy with kind of like the API and stuff. So like um, it could be even a matter of hiring someone to, you know, look up their sometimes like maybe maybe if you could get their email and like looking up their email or somehow somehow getting that data or some type of data point that that could map to LinkedIn, whether that's using a tool or whether that's using maybe a person to kind of like manually go in. I mean, that's maybe that's kind of direction I would go. I've never actually tried it before, to be honest, though. So I don't know. It's, it's been a tough nut to crack. I'm still trying to figure out like, to your point, I, I, I could have a human in there or I could do it, but I'm trying to figure out like, how do I just end to end? Like they visit the website, we figure out who they are on LinkedIn. And then I send them a connection request being like, yo, what's up? I saw you were checking us out. So if I ever figure it out, I will let you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Usually I, st it's, it's interesting because I usually start it on LinkedIn and then I move it on right. different platforms, but I never thought about that. Like taking it from somewhere else. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking about it yeah. more as like a middle of the funnel thing than a top of the funnel thing for us at yeah. this point. Interesting. Yeah. What is, uh, what is like your main service? I was curious. Um, yeah. Okay. I guess we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. So um, we're all about profitability optimization for service, professional services and agencies. And we have a SaaS product that we sell um, that helps agencies create uh, estimates for projects faster and more accurately using information about projects they've done in the past. So example, you have a client that comes to you and they're like, Hey, I want you to build me a website. 
and you're like, cool, here's four websites that we've done before that seem similar. And then we use that data to automatically generate an estimate and then allow you to make tweaks and see how your current assumptions stack up against what's actually happened before. So just a nice way to speed up that process, make it more accurate and also create governance if you're building a sales team around your agency. Really cool. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely want to talk at some point. That's, that's, uh, that's a really we're, cool. just, we're just trying to add on more things as well. So. Yeah, feel free to follow up. I'm sure that everybody's got no shortage of tool in their stacks as we're seeing in the Google Doc, but uh, hopefully this one is uh, not just another thing that you're paying for every month. It's giving you lots of value and helping you close more deals. I love it. And I, I just have a quick thing for you, Marcel. Um, there's a Google Chrome extension in the chat called Nefarious. Definitely run that on LinkedIn before using any cold outreach tools. Make sure the tool's not being actively crawled for and looked for by their uh, security. And then lead feeder now enriches data for emails. They didn't before. So we set up segmentation on our website for people who visit pages that are focused more towards the software funnel versus the agency funnel. So we segment lists inside of lead feeders. So they'll give us the company names of who visited what pages. They'll automatically go into lists. Then we set up the role filter to make sure that we are getting LinkedIn profiles for anyone in this role at that company that visited our site. Now they're, they're full data enrichment. So they'll actually grab an email for you. If you are, uh, I think a pro, or I don't know what the account level is called inside lead feeder, you used to have to take that and go to like hunter.io or something else to find the email. Right. So lead feeder is most of the funnel. Then you just have to get it into your prospecting tool. Right. Um, so then from there, we could do like a Zapier into insert whatever LinkedIn automation tool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, okay. So yeah. So uh, no, uh, lead feeder natively integrates to Slack to your most cold email tools, the bigger ones, sorry, not most, but the, uh, the bigger ones and all major CRMs huge, huge value there. And they're inexpensive. So on the sales side, that's a great tool. Um, does anyone want to focus the conversation on any direction? We have obviously backend stuff that we could focus on. We've got some great people to talk about backend. That could be proposal generation tools I, there. What, any, I, some questions? I have a, I have a really cool new, um, <clears throat> outbounding automation tool that I found that I, I thoroughly enjoy. Um, ironically enough, you might not like me saying it, Alex, but uh, it is a competitor to sales loft. Um, it is uh, called Outplay. It's basically the Indian version of it. It plugs into HubSpot, um, ends up being about $75 a seat. It does, um, I've, unfortunately, I haven't been watching the uh, video of what's happening because I've been trying to fill my, my form in. It's like go out play or something like that. Yeah. Um, the one that Joey uses. Yeah. So the, the interesting thing with it is that it does like SMS outbounding as well as um, like LinkedIn in mail. Um, it, you can build out your cadences for emails, phone calls with uh, voice messages, phone calls without voice messages, um, but then it's actually replaced my need for Calendly. So it actually like is the calendar booking tool as well. And then it does uh, lead attribution tracking. So you're able to see how many times people have interacted with your web properties, how many times somebody's opened an email of yours. Um, so, um, you know, I go after fairly large accounts. My sales cycles can be upwards of a year. So me flirting with somebody and them seeing like, in one instance, I, I sent an email last week and uh, I've seen that's been open 25 times, but I haven't gotten a reply yet. So I know they're really interested in it. I'm now able to figure out other ways to try to build interest or get the conversation going. Oh yeah, this is huge. So Joey Gilkey, one of our sales trainers, he leads another round table. He plugs this natively into um, pipe drive and then lead feeder. We we're talking about lead feeder. There's a really cool setup. And I know most of you have your back ends really well done, but uh, pipe drive now white labels lead feeder. They call it like pipe feeder or something like that. And then you have a native integration with outplay. And then you have a native integration with share work. Uh, share work allows you to do account mapping with some of your clients or your other agency partners. So you can run your entire sales system between uh, outplay 
uh, pipe drive and pipe drives white label version of lead feeder, I guess with calendar integrated too, for all under like 200 bucks. Which oh is yeah, awesome. no, like between this and my LinkedIn automation uh, that I started October of last year, I've built just shy of 2 million in pipeline. Like it's, it's been, uh, it's been a beast that just let me put the gas pedal down. Yeah, it's, it's inexpensive. Yeah. Joey loves this one. So, you know, we just decided to partner with sales loft, which uh, is good for us to do our thing, but uh, this is one that we highly recommend agencies. Sales loft is great if you're using Salesforce because like it has an amazing integration with it, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And it looks like, I mean, if you have, I don't know why you would run this with outreach. Um, great tool. Anyone else have their favorite tool? I like doing this. I mean, you know, our favorite, everyone knows is Airtable. I think if you watch our content stuff, that's our favorite tool. We're doing so much cool stuff with it. If anyone has any Airtable questions, uh, please ask. Um, otherwise, you know, Marcel, outside yeah. of Marikito, what's your favorite tool? We got your stack up here. Yeah. So um, I obviously am a huge Airtable fan as well. Also don't mind Smartsheet. Um, I think both of those are good if you're trying to get some level of automation to reports that require um, calculations, but you don't want to actually like build um, a database and, and layer like an enterprise reporting tool on top of it. Um, so big fan of Airtable, but honestly, the tool that my co-founder and I had a conversation about this yesterday, like at this point we can't live without and we use incessantly is called Miro or Miro. I actually don't know which one it is, tomato, tomato, but M-I-R-O. Yeah. It's a virtual whiteboard and it's just like the most intuitive online workspace I've ever used. It's actually better than being in a room together with a whiteboard and sticky notes, if you can imagine that. So if you work remotely, you collaborate with people a lot. I mean, we're using this for most of our product development, you know, creative sprints. We're using it for running meetings. We're using it for running our board meetings. We're using it to run um, like data mapping sessions with our clients. We use it for everything. We basically live there now. So highly recommend if you're just looking for like a place to brainstorm, get creative, organize things, uh, check out Miro or Miro. I, I still don't know what it's Miro. called. Um, and I'll throw one more in the hat, which is called Descript, which if you haven't heard about Descript, if you do a lot of you know, quick videos, uh, tutorial videos, or if you're post-producing audio or video into text, it is like the craziest thing um you drop any piece of video or audio into it it turns it into a text uh basically like a, a word document and then you edit the video and audio by editing the word documents and they have this feature called overdub so if you screw up and you say something wrong you can retype it and it uses ai to figure out what your voice is and then it fixes your mistake uh, so it is by far the fastest and easiest way to do that kind of like first rough edit and add some like basic elements to the video editing process. But this has streamlined our podcast post-production process immensely. And it's some of the best value on the internet from what I found in terms of transcription, like per word, you get so much value on top of all those features for a low monthly fee. So definitely recommend Descript if you're doing any kind of post-production on audio video that um, you want to streamline uh, or turning it into blogs. Yeah, this I was just sending off one of these to my. Oh, am I on mute? No, no, I'm not. I was just sending off one of these to my editor now. So I just, what you do is you upload your video or your MP3, your audio. It obviously transcribes it. There's some work to be done on the transcription. It's not 100%. Uh, but then you export it. What's cool is you can export it with paragraph breaks, speaker labels. It has a really awesome, awesome like uh, AI type function where it identifies the speakers and allows you to type names. So it'll play a little clip of Marcel speaking versus me speaking and, and I'll manually type in Marcel's name and then my name. And then it goes through and finds everywhere where that voice matches. And um, then you export it as a Word doc. I upload it to Google Docs. And then I share that with my VA or my editor. They go in and they fix, you see these issues right here. Like you see how there's the podcast about partner enablement. I've got to delete that and change the uh, person there. Um, so I've got someone who does that. And what's really cool, and I'll see if I can find the tool, you can remove filler words. Mm. So Ryan and I on this podcast, we used um and ah a whole lot, but watch wow. <laughs> I'll apply to all and I will go ahead. Let me admit, sorry, someone's in the waiting room. So I can apply all and I can remove all of these filler words all at once. 
and then I can send off the new audio without the filler words. So that saves you if you've ever edited a podcast and you don't like those long ums with the breaks. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Descript is former founder of um, um, Groupon actually founded this company. Super brilliant. Anyways, I digress off that. Uh, go back to here. So, oh, my Miro, by the way, not Miro, Miro. Um, if you haven't used uh -huh. Miro, uh, we use it for like user journey mapping. What's cool is you can now embed different apps inside of it. So you can embed whole Google Docs where you don't have to go back to Google Doc and edit the doc. So I can have a link to a doc here. It'll open inside Miro if it's natively integrated and they've got a whole bunch of apps and it's got preloaded templates. So you can preload Gantt charts and different, um, you know, things that they have and just edit these, right? So these are all little, and then you have views and you can export this as an image. Like this is a view and I can share a view with Marcel that's different than the one I share with Marquis or whoever. Pretty cool. Anyways, um, that's awesome. Thank you very much, Marcel. Those are all really, really badass tools. And Marquis, let's go over to you since you took the time and put some stuff in. Superhuman, is anyone curious about that? I am. Um, anyone else uh, have any? Yeah, me too. That was so hyped. And I'm curious if it lives up to the hype. It absolutely does. Um, they have this whole like, um, their, their process for onboarding is pretty like unique. So you go and you sign up, you have to schedule onboarding so they can walk you through it. Um, Cause I assume the adoption rate was low in the beginning. Um, what they do is they remove all the noise from like Gmail accounts or Outlook or depending what you're using. And it just like streamlines your workflow. So you can like zip through emails really quick. Um, they use like snippets and um, like code language shortcuts, a lot of shortcuts to like um, reply all the emails to add CC to um, schedule stuff to remind you to basically just keep your inbox at zero all the time. It's super minimalist, um, which I really like. And like after using it for about a week, I went back into my Gmail. Sorry, that's the thing. It connects with Gmail only um, right now. And so I went back into my Gmail and I saw my left pane with all my like lists of emails. I saw the reading pane, then I saw my calendar and I just thought, man, there's so much noise here. And I was just spending a lot of time composing emails, um, getting back to people, trying to sift through them and organize them. It absolutely lives up to, to the hype. Um, and it's really cool, right? The functionality is limited. Like you can sync it to, so our CRM is HubSpot. So we can add like a BCC link to the CRM, um, but it doesn't plug into a lot of the tools that I become used to using. So there's times where like I need to jump back into Gmail for something. Um, it has a calendar view, but it's not super intuitive yet. And so I'll have to jump back into Google Calendar as well, but you can zip through calendars. So like if you type in how's tomorrow at you know three, it will pull up your calendars to see if you're free. And then if you're not, you can like scroll through really quickly and it updates that in the email. So it's, it's really, really good. I would recommend taking a look at it. It's 40 bucks a month. Totally worth it though, um, in my opinion. Uh, HubSpot's our CRM. We do a lot in HubSpot. Email marketing happens there. Um, some of our data comes from there. Um, CMS is on HubSpot as well for one of our websites. Um, reporting is there as well. And so we're on, we have Marketing Pro, Sales Pro, and then CMS Enterprise um, for all of that backend kind of sales automation stuff. And with being HubSpot partners, like it makes sense for us. And then um, a lot of the workflow automation stuff that we do ties directly into HubSpot. So we're prescribing it for our customers and then we're using it as well um, to assist in our onboarding process. So our onboarding is pretty hands-off once the deal is updated. Um, in HubSpot, workflows trigger, emails get sent out. Um, and then we use Calendly um, for the team booking for any like onboarding kickoff stuff that needs to happen. So um, I'm really liking that um, functionality there. Outreach, like I said, not much going on there right now. Um, LinkedIn ads is what we're doing. Um, we'd love to explore, you know, um, you know, I know I'm gonna talk with Alex Daenery uh, next week about that. Um, calendar, Google Cal, and then Calendly as well. Um, I really like the groups or teams feature in Calendly. Like if we have any internal meetings we need to book, I just have a link. I have everyone's calendar booked to it or synced to it. And so it cuts back on that back and forth. And then we can send those ones to clients as well to book meetings with us um, for any um, kickoffs or strategy calls, anything like that. 
Um, creative, we run Adobe Suite um, for any big creative stuff. Um, Canva as well. And then I'm a huge fan of Miro. Um, in the process stuff that we do, um, a lot of process maps happen there. Um, frameworks for like Asana build outs. Um, we do some team meetings in there as well. Over Christmas, we, that was the first chance we had to do like a, a team um, like Christmas party. We did some online games inside of Miro as well. So it's really cool because it promotes collaboration and it's like real time. And lots of like onboard templates for you to explore. Um, I run a podcast. And so I just switched over to Riverside.fm. Um, unlike Zoom. Me too. Yeah. Plus one for Riverside. So good. So good. So good. Um, I was on a show and they were using it. And what it does is um, they eliminate the issue with like bad internet or like bad audio. So when you're recording, it's like, I still don't know how it does it because it's all internet based, but um, it has like a, a 4K or high def like quality video on both sides, as well as um, high def audio. So once you're done, even if your internet fully cuts out and you're still like, not cuts out, but if, it, if, if it's choppy, you'll still get a smooth streamlined like video at the end of it and audio and you download it, you download your audio files, you have speaker files, guest files, it's like, it's perfect. It's like, it, it boasts a lot, but it absolutely lives up to, to its promises. Um, and so I would highly recommend that if you're doing any podcasting, you can do AMAs, webinars in there. You can have um, a panel, you can have a guest um, kind of waiting area. You can still do comments and chats. It's really, really good. Um, project management. Um, Can I quick question on that? Sorry, Marky. Just quick question because you guys, while you're on that podcast, versus Squadcast. I've never heard of Squadcast. Okay. The Squadcast do um, video as well. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, interesting. It's probably a similar concept. Like I assume that all like these platforms are doing is they're using the caching in the browser to Got store it. the files yeah. locally and then upload them kind of periodically as the internet connection is stable. Marcel knows. Marcel knows how they do it. Okay. I don't think that was the right squad cast. So if you have a link, oh, this is probably the right one. Yeah. Squad cast. I'm, yeah, I may, I may have to switch here. I'm on anchor.fm. Uh, I've been on for like five years and never even thought about it um, switching, but they're, they're in beta for video, but they haven't launched video yet. So yeah, yeah this uh, Riverside versus Squadcast, I'll paste the links here, but. Yeah. Um, Night and day though, um, when I switched from Zoom to this. Um, cool. We so project management, Asana, um, we're Asana Solutions Partners. So everything we do, Asana is the core, SOPs are there, process docs, templates are there. And then it plugs into um, to um, wow HubSpot um, to complete that like loop for onboarding, and um, we can get tasks that go back and forth, so you no longer have to just have tasks in HubSpot. You can sync to like Slack and then Asana, so that's huge for us. Harvest um, as well for time tracking and projects and budgets, and um, I've integrated Forecast before, but we don't use Forecast. Um, Marcel integrated Parakeeto before, so I know it's a great tool, um, but we're not using it yet. <laughs> but uh, data- we talk about that, Marquis. Yeah, sure. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, data box, um, we use for like data dashboards. Um, I recently came across, oh man. I'm forgetting what it's called now, but just a new dashboard platform. Databox works for us right now because we can plug in everything. Um, but between that and HubSpot, it's where we look at all um, data across the tech tools. So QuickBooks plugs in there, Asana plugs in there, Stripe plugs in there, um, HubSpot plugs in there. So everything is really nice and in, in, uh, orderly in one um, spot. Communication went over this already. Superhuman wise stamp is really cool. So it connects to the G Suite API. And so it creates digital um, email signatures for your entire team. So you can update them all there and you can have a company facing profile. So if you have a sale running or you wanna like communicate something across the board without you know having to say, hey, team members, go and update your email signature. You're bringing on a new employee you can create it for them, send them the, uh, the activation, and it's automatically synced to, to Gmail for them. 
um, really robust. You can have call to actions in there. You can have anything you want, really. Ystamp is a really cool tool uh, we just started using. Uh, CMS, WordPress, and HubSpot. Um, no real community. I got a little Facebook group I'm trying to get going. Uh, hoping that grows in the next little bit. Um, content, we're doing like Google Docs and Asana. Nothing for SEO right now. Um, I've used like Buzz, Sumo, and stuff like that in the past, but I'm not paying as much attention there as I probably should. Um, podcast uploading, hosting is Libsyn. Um, there's probably better ones out there, just it's the one I've always known. Billing, um, we're using Pandadoc for all proposals, um, quotes, um, NDAs, um, all that kind of stuff. Proposals, MSAs, um, scopes of work all go out through Pandadoc. Um, and then we have QuickBooks and Stripe on the back end for finances. And one that I'll add, I don't know where it would fall, but we do HR um, and benefits and payroll through HUME. Um, they're a Canadian company. They boast that they're Canadian for Canadians. I'm sure that Americans can jump on, but um, HUME is what we use for our HR. Really cool. How do you spell HUME? What's the URL? Just like that. Uh, let me see what the URL is. Ohio or something like that. HUME.ca. So yeah, it's very Canadian. But uh, there's other options. I know like Rippling is really good if you're in the States. Um, another one that's escaping me right now, but that's what we use. Oh, very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, awesome. Um, Amanda, anybody that hasn't chimed in, you guys have any questions? Michael, you guys uh, have any specific reasons you want to be here? Otherwise, I'll move on. I would say the, the other uh, thing for HR, um, Gusto um, has a lot of um, really great tools for smaller folks. Yeah, very cool. Um, let's do this. Uh, Jim? Are you still here or did you leave? No, you're still can here. I, can I nerd out on? As long as you don't have three gyms. Yeah, Alex, do what you need to do real quick, but then I want to hear like favorite tools from the last few people that we haven't heard from. So I, I was going to nerd out on payment gateways. So um, everybody uses Stripe. Stripe is ungodly expensive if you end up invoicing over a $30 order. So if you're actually processing thousands of dollars of payments a month, um, I ended up switching to a, a credit system called Heartland uh, Payment Systems. Um, they buy directly from the exchange. Um, so on business to business transactions, I actually pay market par rate. So oftentimes instead of paying a 3% card fee, um, I'm like down closer to 2%. Um, so I noticed that annually I, I've saved a lot of money by going directly to a, a payment gateway um, that is designed for businesses handling large transactions. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was, sorry, I missed that recommendation. What tool was that? That uh, the Heartland Payment Systems. So true, true commerce is EDI. So that ties my ERP to my clients ERPs. So the invoicing goes electronically, but these guys, I absolutely love. Um, they're, they're more like B2B merchants. So like, um, or like if, if you go to a retail shop and actually swipe your credit card, chances are Heartland is going to be who's handling that payment processing. But it costs you, like if you're actually invoicing, it doesn't cost me anything to have the account. Uh, I basically just promised to um, run at least $2,000 a month through the payment gateway. And then they get um, a percentage of the transaction that, hey, I'm paying par rate because I'm B2B. And then I'm able to actually set up recurring payments. So um, for like my retainers and things like that, I can recur. I'm also able to do recurring ACH. I love that. Um, yeah, very cool. So are there any limits to that? I mean, it sounds like you got to run 2000 through it. Are there any location limits or anything like that? Or not at all i can also run any currency i want very cool i that's a new one man i i mean i use charge b i think i saw charge b a couple times in there but um honestly i probably pay the, the, this is one of those things of i found it because like with me doing implementations of larger like e-commerce stores um this is a very easy one to connect um to clients and then 
I just ended up getting an account myself. Um, I will also say that um, I'm going to eat my my words so Cloda and Alex can uh, laugh and chuckle at what I'm about to say. Um, but I'm really impressed with the service hub from HubSpot. Um, for the last two years, I've uh, th this is me eating crow. I, I've hated HubSpot for a very long time. And uh, I'm really fascinated with what they're doing on the back office side of things. I love it. Yeah, they're moving upstream. They're, uh, yeah, there's some interesting things. Uh, maybe Alex will tell you offline what he thinks he knows about a new big product chain. <laughs> Floda may know too. I don't know, but um, I'll let you guys discuss offline. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I want to yeah hear video um, thoughts from everybody mm. as well. Um, Marcel just posted switching from Vidyard to Loom. Uh, I use both for different reasons, but um, Loom is coming with some really cool products and I use their desktop app as well. So we are partnered with Vidyard and we do represent them for sales, bigger sales agendas, but um, you can't hate what Loom's been up to. Their stuff is killer. I got a lot of love for Michael Litt, but I had to switch to Loom. It was just, it was better for what I needed. I use both as well. Like Loom does a lot that like, I haven't found Vidyard to be able to do yet and it just feels better to me. But uh, yeah, different use cases, I think. But uh, yeah, Loom's definitely on the up and up. And they integrate with Asana as well, which is nice. So I can get them in my project brief, uh, project brief view. Yeah, it seems like their product decisions are really focused on the workflows, you know, the business operations. They did a Miro integration, I think, um, yeah. Asana, like where Vidyard is very much top of funnel sales, X, Y, Z. But I, it looks like I have to upgrade. So you guys are probably on this one right here, $8 per creator. Yeah. I'm going to have to do Correct. that. Do any of you use video drawing or anything for client or just presentations for, I know you were using something, Marcel, in one of our round tables that I'm curious what it was. Can yeah. So that, that was a setup that I've got with my iPad pro. Um, and I just run that into zoom, uh, and you can share your screen, uh, just the, by connecting an iOS device to your computer. And then I just draw on slide decks that I export to PDFs in an app called Notability, um, which is just like a note-taking app. Um, so that's how I do like the presentations while I'm presenting. But uh, I have used like the call to actions and stuff in Loom videos. Part of like our funnel today is if you if you get on our email list and you're using Harvest, you'll probably get a video from me. Um, and I'm basically going to be like, hey, let's get on a call. And I hold up a whiteboard, a real whiteboard, and I write your name on it and I wave. And then I use that animated GIF to put it in the email. And then I usually have an emoji with like the, the flag of the country that the person's from. So they really know that was, this is actually just for you. This is not an automated email. So I love Loom for that workflow. It's just so quick. And it allows you to like really make sure that your video stands out and um, put a call to action on it so that the person can just like book a call right from watching that video. Awesome. So last, last round table was this app right here, Notability. You had it on your iPad and that was broadcasting to Zoom. That's right. Yeah. So I was just sharing my screen and then inside of Notability, I export PDFs of presentation decks usually that I design and I just draw on them um, during the presentations, which I find is like a really intuitive way to kind of present ideas and answer questions. Yeah, and we Joey Gilkey tried to do this on one of our roundtables recently, and he failed to get it integrated to Zoom. What is the trick? Is there like a link we can paste? It's it's super easy. Like uh, when you hit share screen, um, you'll have two options: share an iOS device via um, via AirPlay, which I don't love because it's wireless and this just unreliable because it's wireless. Um, or if you plug it in, you have the option to share an iOS device via cable. Um, and that's all it is. And then it just shares whatever's on your iOS screen verbatim. So you make sure you, you close out all the tabs that are not relevant to the presentation and get your notability open and go to town. I'm looking now. I, oh, go ahead, Alex. While I'm looking at I was going to say, um, if, if I can add on to this, actually, after, at the end of the year, um, I ended up ordering a smart whiteboard and um, coolest things ever. Um, so like, th this is pretty pretty badass yeah and i i was gonna say can you see this is it right here this iphone ipad cable so you share the iPad. click on share that and then you should be able to bring your iphone screen up yeah ah uh, okay so when i'm the host and someone like if you wanted to share it right now 
I'd have to click on share screen and then select mine, but the host has disabled participant screen sharing. And so I cannot do that. Got it. He wasn't, that's probably where the user error came in. Okay, cool. Um, I, yeah. And if um, I think we can get that video, it's in, I think it's in here. If anyone wants to see it in action, it's uh, in Marcel's round table where he was doing some really cool presentation. It makes the presentation engaging. I, mean, I can um, show really you now fun. if you want. <laughs> yeah. I want to, I want to get back to the stack share stuff, but yeah, feel free to, you know, um, pull something up, but um, Jim uh, or. Yeah. Well, Let me rip. Let me rip through this for a minute. Is that okay? Go through your favorite. Focus on your favorites. Obviously, skip the regular ones, you know. Okay. Well, let me let me say something about cold outreach, which we don't do well. So I'm using Bark and I've used Meet Hugo. So I think Bark would be good if you were going after generic SEO, but it makes me angry every time they send me a lead because it doesn't tell me what industry they're in and that we really want B2B stuff. So that's not so great. I did get a giant public relations deal out of Bark, but I'm not saying I like it. Meet Hugo is very government oriented. They have all the government contracts for marketing and public relations and everything and SEO. So if you like that, that would be great. So we're using a product that we've used. I've actually used it for nine years called Gather Content. So there are lots of content it's, people are starting to call it content operations, but there are lots of ways to organize content and manage everything from ideation to posting. So I've used gather content mostly for web development, mostly internally, but I'm trying to figure out if I can use this externally. And there are a, a number of players in the market. So, but I like it. I'm using Pandadoc. I heard Marquis say that he was using it. I, I think that's great for agreements and other contractual kind of stuff. I'm using Gusto for payroll and I really like it. They also just added uh, payroll outside the US and I'm not exactly sure what that is. S several of you guys mentioned Descript and it reminded me that I had used it and really loved it. So I'll just say that about Descript. I use this app, which you guys probably know about called Crisp with a K that does uh, noise suppression inside oh, yeah. Zoom and other, other things. So uh, that's, and then I have one question and that is I see, keep seeing this product called Lately popping up that takes like everything that you have on video and cutting it into uh, social media sized little bites. So I don't know if you guys have run into it but I'm curious if anybody knows anything about it. Oh, Lately, anyone? Pretty good. Lately, what would it be? Lately for uh, for video, I've I use another one um, that I just got. Sorry, lately, lately for video. What do you think? What do you think? Lately, lately. I I don't know. Um, what is mine? Mine is called. Give me one sec. I'll think of it. I was just using it. Mm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure this out. Yeah, if you have any links, Jim, please post them. I'm yeah, really I'll post it. About lately. Um, and I'll figure out grain. Mine's grain.co. That's what it was. God, it's a new one. Grain.co, guys. This is, I think, similar to lately from what you just said. It jumps into all of your Zoom calls and it creates a live broadcast. And it also will allow you to, in the Zoom call, you can say, oh, Marcel's about to say something really cool. You can start a mini cut of what's going on. And then it also transcribes um, live and then you can cut out the transcription. So it creates these really good snippets of a Zoom conversation. I should have probably had it on this one. Um, sometimes I forget I have it, but um, pretty cool. Not a lot of weight. It doesn't bog down my meetings from what I can tell. And then you can integrate it with Slack or share it on social. And it Does looks it like work? It. What's up? Does it work outside of Zoom? So like uh, we, we use um, Google or uh, Microsoft Teams a lot. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I don't think so. I think it's a Zoom app. Sorry, let me paste the link here. What the hell is going on? Yeah, I'll paste the link here for you. Oh, that's weird. My Since everybody's mentioning uh, keyword research, I will have to say that like I, abs like, 
I pay for few tools. Like I, I definitely leverage my, my partnerships to get me a lot of tools, but um, I will shout from the top of the Empire State Building about demand jump. Um, it, it gives you superpowers and um, like ev every time I've led with it, um, it definitely gets a conversation going and leads uh, high likelihood to a close on a sale. Yeah, demand jumps huge. They blew up recently too. Um, I didn't hear about them at all. And then I heard about them everywhere. Is this it? Is this the right URL? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's not, it, I mean, like they definitely have like your enterprise solutions and things like that. But for like, if you're just looking at like small things, you can get it for like a hundred dollars a month. Um, but it, it is stunning. Like I went in with a client last year we found a whole new market segment that nobody even realized about. And it like helped to inform uh, DSP buy and content and all of that fun stuff. Yeah, it's not cheap, but this one, it looks like this will get you part of the way. Awesome. Yeah, um, very cool. So let's see if we have any time. Uh, let's see who hasn't gone yet. Anybody want to go? True lately.com. Okay. Go. Try lately.com. Let me do this. Yeah. Very cool. Come on. And if any of you are interested in like demand jump from a sales perspective, I could probably get you guys connected with the company and get you like a prospecting account to help sell. So you can lead with insight reports and things like that. Very cool. Very cool. And then, um, Mike, if you have any awesome tools that you'd love to plug or things that you're trying to get away from or any questions. Okay. I promise I won't plug our agency management system. It's called Pride. It's made by Germans. It's, um, it's character building. Um, we have a couple of things that are being from the UK. Um, I'm going to talk about um, Exclaimer, which is a great tool for um, email signatures. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to pick, because I don't think anyone's mentioned it, is um, we use Better Proposals, which is a competitor to Proposify. It's actually a UK company again. Um, if anyone's writing proposals in Word, I guarantee if you buy one of these systems, you'll spend the rest of your life wondering why you didn't do it before and trying to work out why these systems are so much better. We've loved it. It massively reduces our time to create proposals. Awesome. So Proposify, I think most of us have uh, come across these guys once or twice. I'll pull up a link here. And they live, they live in this part of Canada. They're in Halifax. That's not far from me. <laughs> Little known fact. And I know Kyle personally, he's a great person and they have an awesome company. So highly, highly back Proposify as a company and as people, as well as as product. It's like a super Canadian chat today. Yeah, I like it. Really it really is. Yeah, guys. Thanks, for, thanks, everyone. I mean, I know we're at time, but if anyone has any last final questions that weren't addressed, um, looks like Alex, does anyone have any good posting software on multiple platforms that's reliable? Is that social media syndication? Yeah, I, I had a lot of problems with Hootsuite, so I don't know if anyone has any. I've heard great things about Agora Pulse. I know the founder personally. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, but from my experience, they're the most solid, most complete social media tool. And there's no like huge gaps like there are in other tools like Buffer, for example, not being able to post native video to LinkedIn where you're just like, you figure that out and you're like, oh, well, this, this is kind of like a, a complete deal breaker or other platforms not being able to post to Instagram. They all seem to have their little thing that's just like, why does this not work? Uh, Agora Pulse doesn't really have to seem to have that and it's super solid. So I'll plus one that and say that they do reporting as well for both organic and paid. Um, so you can connect your pixels and your ad accounts and it does all that stuff on board for you. Really, really good. Yeah, not, not overly pricey. And I think one of the things that they do, they do LinkedIn as well. Yeah, so some of them don't do LinkedIn. Um, if any of you, I think you guys are all B2B, but um, I'll do last one, Tailwind app. We represented them for a little while. Great company, very cheap. Uh, the social media syndication platform for Pinterest and Instagram. Very rarely do you see Pinterest as an option for syndication. 
And it's a gold mine for some of you. Not all of you. I think most of you are B2B, but check out Tailwind if you're interested in um, Pinterest and Instagram. Otherwise, Agora Pulse. Yeah, we use we use Sendable too. We uh, we felt found the same thing with Hootsuite. It was just getting massively expensive for us, and we switched over to Sendable. Um, they're another pretty affordable one. They do have the LinkedIn integration. Uh, I wouldn't say that their reporting is amazing, uh, but their posting really is super efficient. Uh, their their web app uh, on the uh, or their mobile app is really uh, is really tight, uh, and our team really is able to connect well there because you can go and assign accounts differently, and it's really made for agencies and that you can go in and you know assign you know, just like in Hoos Week and assign certain social media managers to certain accounts. I love it. That's awesome and very affordable. Um, thank you for that. And um, everybody, you know, we're out of time, but we have more of these things coming up. So definitely check out some of these other events. Uh, we're going to do video. We're going to do sales. Those are the ones that are relevant to this conversation. Uh, so please, and then come to Marcel and Ryan doing the financial process. As you can see, Marcel's whiteboard in action. And then Marquis, we got to get you back up on this calendar as well soon too. Marquis and Alex for their project management uh, roundtable. Thanks, Mike McDermott for joining. We haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Hopefully we'll see you back here um, for one of these future events. Nice to meet everyone. Have Thanks a great everybody. day. Thanks, Alex. Back soon. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thanks Alex. Bye. Appreciate it, man. Nice, nice cabana there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hang on for a sec. I want to talk to Can't you. You have a oh seat. sure. Yeah, definitely. Where are you, by the way? Uh, so I'm in Playa del Carmen. <laughs> yeah. Come, <laughs> you got to come down there? sometime, man. Come on, we'll have we'll have a fun time, man. I'll show you, I'll show you around. How how long have you been there? Uh, so I've been here about three or four days. I'm actually uh, looking at apartments, so I'm actually moving down here. Um, so you know Stephen Steers. Even what's his last name? Dude, uh, Steers, S T. Let me see if I can get him in. He's down there. Uh, okay. He's in our group. S T E E R S. Yeah, you know what's crazy, man? There's so many like there's so many like agencies and marketing people down here. Like it's it's actually it's pretty interesting. How's the um, how's the Wi-Fi and all that? I mean, obviously noise is going to be a problem for you. Yeah, I mean, as just, I mean, on this call, it was fine. I was able to, you know, everything was good. I was, when I was down in Tulum, totally different story. Uh, I was cutting in and out. I think it's like maybe 20, 30 megabits per second, something like that. So it's not like anything crazy, you know, um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty solid. I think he may be in Tulum uh, or Cancun. I don't remember him saying Playa, but maybe, I don't know, but he's super cool. Yeah. He's a- I would love to connect with him. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, he's a sales uh, sales coach. So here's his LinkedIn. Yeah, oh, yeah. we're much. definitely looking to connect with uh, sales coaches for sure. Yeah, no, you two can have a lot of conversation. He's he's trying to go upstream with his uh, consulting practice. Here's his LinkedIn. Um, definitely, yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I don't know if you know this guy.